So maybe you're thinking about starting a YouTube channel or you've already started one. Today I'm gonna cover some things that YouTubers will not tell you when it comes to running your own channel. Grab a pen and a pad because you're gonna wanna take some notes. These are some things I wish I knew before I started. Hey, before we begin, if you can subscribe to this channel, this way I can continue to bring you content like this that's going to help you on your social media journey. So when I decided to start a YouTube channel, I was excited, as I mentioned in the beginning, passionate, ready to do it. I knew I had a camera and I also had a cell phone and I was about to dive head into this thing and go for it because I knew I was going to reach the uh, qualifications to start making an income on YouTube. Three years into the game, I did not know some of the obstacles or things that I was going to come up against, but now I'm grateful that I've ran across those uh, obstacles and I learned how to overcome them. So this is why I am here to help you know about these things before they happen or before you encounter them so you can be prepared and know that it's still possible and doable uh, for you to be successful on YouTube. But I'm trying to give you a heads up and some insight ahead of time. First things first, it takes a high amount of effort in creating videos. It's not really easy to just stand behind the camera and spit off uh, whatever it is that you are going to present to the world. It involves a lot of editing. It involves uh, high quality content if you want to be uh, featured in the search results and if you want to be uh, listed in browser features on YouTube. There is a ton of effort that goes into creating a YouTube video. Whatever your niche or genre, just know that you can pick the times of the week to start uh, recording, but you wanna make sure that you either record on the same day or you record on certain days and you edit on certain days. There has to be a balance that you will eventually find out. It's never going to be easy to record and edit and get the video up in a few hours. You might feel like that's going to work, but you don't want to deliver sloppy content. Myself, personally, I will record a video for about an hour and a half, and editing takes me anywhere from another hour and a half to two and a half hours because I might want the video to look a certain way. I might want certain bells and whistles, you know, uh, music playing, intros, outros, uh, fixing any type of uh, color correction. These are a lot of things that go into play. Zoom in, out, pans, those things. Another thing you may want to know is when it comes to the financial part, not every YouTuber is making a ton of money. There are times when I started out, I was making $340 a month. It went down to $320, to $300, to $250, to $143 a month. Um, it does fluctuate, and that's why you need to have a couple of different things going on, different revenue streams. So whether you're selling merchandise on your channel, AdSense as well, which is the main thing people get paid from, is from the ads on their videos. And maybe you also wanna have channel memberships, as well as asking people to to send you uh, thanks, you know, on each video, which is you know an amount that they can choose uh, to thank you for the information that you've supplied to them on that content. Partnerships, you know, with other brands, you know, or sponsorships are another way to generate income as well. Um, you do not solely want to rely on ads. That can make you a ton of money, but if for some reason your video is not doing well and the ads that are placed on there are not paying that much, then you will see your income go up and down. There are a couple of things I am going to read this way. I don't leave out anything, but I want to make sure that if you're taking notes, you know exactly what to expect, all right? It is an exciting venture to go on. There are some times you are going to feel burnout. And yeah, you're excited about the channel, but sometimes you're just not gonna have an idea of what to create. You know, you might want to create a trending video, but it might not just be in you. You know, there could be a, uh, NBA game on or NFL game on or maybe your family's doing something at a park and you say to yourself man you know what I just don't have it in me to create a video today because I want to be there I'd rather be somewhere else 
but when you first started out, you saw the potential and you knew what you could do and you were excited about it. Um, and so other things will come your way. And this is when you have to begin to self-manage yourself and treat YouTube like a job. Have hours that you know you have to work, you know you have to get it done. Otherwise, it's not gonna get done. And make sure you keep those parameters and you know, outside of those hours, that's your play time, that's your leisure time, that's when you can relax and breathe. If you're really into doing high quality videos and maybe you're paying your own lighting bill um, at the house or smud bill, you know, um, I have lights on right now. I have a computer in front of me, a computer in back of me. I have a camera going, um, a USB microphone. So basically what I'm saying is, is there's uh, electricity being used right now. There's energy being used. So if you're one who is uh, paying the bills at your house, you might want to keep that in mind. The easiest way with, to be uh, use your cell phone, um, this is one thing. You know, it's not five different things pulling from your energy source. Um, and all you have to worry about is your cell phone. So, you know, editing wise, there are apps that you can edit on your phone, but just something to keep in mind. You will come across videos that are done super nice. Do not compare yourself to those videos because right now you're getting your feet wet. You're seeing what you can produce. Um, there may be an expectation that you put up on yourself, but don't put yourself up so high to where you feel like you have to perform like these videos that are already out there. Give yourself a little wiggle room. Realize that you were learning, that you were going to get better day by day or video after video. Um, and other things will come, you know, put the practice in, get your feet wet. If you haven't started already, start making videos and uploading them. Another thing to remember is you're going to get critiques because you are putting your videos out to the world, uh, to the public. People are going to comment on your videos. Um, now there are things as comment filters where you can put in certain words ahead of time, you know, like hate speech, different curse words, um, certain emojis and things of that nature. But know if you are trying to reach the masses and if you are trying to grow your uh, YouTube channel and you want it to be public or maybe even go viral on certain content, you're going to get comments. Once you can get past the negative comments, which is not a lot, honestly, out of let's say 100 comments that I get, three of them are bad or negative and it really has nothing to do with me as a person. It's someone critiquing the content of what I've delivered or the information. So it's never to be taken personal. If you are going to be collaborating with a brand or a sponsorship, one of the things that could delay you from uploading the video is you usually have to send it back to them first so they can review it and give you their approval. Sometimes I've created a video, uploaded it, tagged the sponsor in the video, and they got back to me and said, you know, you forgot to mention this, you didn't mention that, you know, can you please, you know, redo the video? And so don't ever be trigger happy to hit submit or to hit post, you know, take your time. And if you're gonna work on something, make sure it's quality. You know, um, you've probably heard quality over quantity. That doesn't always apply, but you can never fail with quality over quantity. You can dish out eight YouTube videos and they all get 100 views a piece and dish out one quality video and it gets you know 40,000 views. So you wanna make sure that you take your time with everything that you do. I know we're excited trying to get to a certain number or subscriber count, um, watch time. It's best that you do your homework and study for the video that you were about to make or the trend that you were about to do um, before just randomly doing it. Do some research, you know, see what's out there and maybe if there's thumbnails, you know, look at that thumbnail and ask yourself, how can I make my thumbnail better than theirs? Um, look at the keywords, you know, that they are uh, using. You know, you can use different plugin extensions like TubeBuddy, there's another one out there, and see what keywords, you know, those videos are ranking for. And you can either copy those same keywords or go for a different keyword that's going to draw people to your video. 
There will be a ton of inconsistencies in a YouTuber's video, mistakes, you know, edits, things that are taken out and made to look smooth in the video, but they don't disclose this information in the final uh, result. The final result is edited, it's uploaded, it has an intro, an outro, bells and whistles in the middle, such as, you know, things popping up on the screens, you know, zoom in, zoom out, you know, like music underneath the video, and at the end of the result, you see this quality content well put together video not knowing that it probably took the YouTuber, you know, two hours, three hours to make countless retakes, stumbling over their words and their lines just to deliver this one video. Um, and then they only can possibly crank out one video a week, maybe two videos a week. I remember when I was on Fiverr.com, I would um, take a lot of orders in and I told myself the more orders I can uh, fulfill, you know, the more money I would make. Well, you know what? I did that. I turned that feature on and video requests started coming in. And guess what? I could not edit fast enough. Now that was on that platform, but it's the same thing on YouTube. As many videos that I have in my head, as many ideas as I have, life gets in the way. So whether it's having to go to the grocery store, having to run errands, we all have these video ideas, these content ideas, and we tell ourselves, you know what, I can make three or four or five videos and I can edit them real fast. You know, you try to do that and you realize your hands are getting tired. You know, maybe your uh, hand is numbing up, you know, hopefully arthritis hasn't kicked in or whatever the case is. And you realize you can't go as fast as you thought you could. And so now you're like, I can only do one video a week, maybe two videos a week because you really don't have the money or the finances to outsource to pay someone to edit your videos. I've been there and I've tried it and they charge a lot of money when I can just edit it myself. And things in your home may change, such as uh, rooms being used for different things. Uh, right now I have my equipment in a location that was different from where it used to be last year and the year before. And so if people are watching TV or if people are coming in and out of the bathroom, closing the door, in the refrigerator, slamming the refrigerator, those are some of the things that you will have to factor in if some of the background noises for other people in your home are you know, filtering in to your microphone or into your video. Just some things to keep in mind. You have to have a designated time set aside, evaluate you know who's doing what when is the best time for you to record another thing I will add is if you are going to be streaming on YouTube that is a whole nother setup I'm recently now streaming on TikTok, uh, YouTube um, and Instagram and it took me a while and I'm talking about four or five months before I could finally get all of my streaming up and ready um, everything from the HDMI cable that goes from the Canon camera to the iMac. Um, you have to have a PC that you know has a good processor um, and it needs to be a new computer. So some of the things that look easy, it's not really easy when you start piecing things together. I had to make sure that I had a nice USB microphone and a tripod, the right lighting, because sometimes the lighting from the natural light outside through the windows can change. I will say it is all worth it once you figure everything out, but I want to tell you as someone who is very smart with technology and tech savvy, it took me about a year or six to eight months, close to a year before I finally started being able to stream, realizing that I still needed this or I still needed that. And once you do a certain thing, you realize, oh, that's not gonna work until I get this. So what do you wanna do? Is it recording? Is it trends? Is it YouTube shorts? Is it streaming? Those are some things that you really want to think about before you can really get up and running and record the type of content that you really want to make. Hey guys, very low key and honest and upfront with you um, as far as you know what it really takes uh, to run a YouTube channel. Um, if you have any questions, please put those in the comments below. I can directly respond to you. Um, that way I can help you with anything that you know I maybe didn't cover on here but you still have a question on um, even if it's related to TikTok. Alright guys, until next time.